So proxy is a machine or a set of machine that sits between two systems. Now the two systems can be a user and a backend system or two backend systems or anything. So proxy is just a machine that is sitting in between something. In most cases, proxy is there to abstract out some complexities or untrusted environment or something. So with a very common intention of abstracting out proxies installed. Now, here let's talk about the first kind of proxy which is forward proxy now forward proxy is basically what we all have experienced in our colleges and at our workplaces it basically abstracts out the clients the users us by acting as a middleman so here it protects the identity of the client and whenever client makes a call the call goes via this proxy to the internet or to some service or to some server this is a forward proxy where we are where it is responsibility of the proxy to forward the request get the response and it is abstracting out the clients it hides the identity of the client now why do we need it security is one of the most important reasons which is where the because it is protecting the client's identity the external systems let's say the internet right or some other service or some other tools they see the ip address only of the proxy they don't know the ip address of this client it protects the identity right so external side typically sees the ip address of this machine i'll give you a very interesting uh, example and a story from my life uh, during my masters i was a uh, part of a hackathon in which i built a search engine on top of linkedin's data so we were scraping linkedin data at that time to get the profile information of a lot of users now while we were doing it LinkedIn had employed rate limiting. I'm talking 2014. They had rate limiting employed. So when we made a call to LinkedIn repetitively over a, like using a script, after some time, rate limiter kicked in and they blocked our IP address. The thing is, although only I was the one who was making the call, the LinkedIn access of the entire college went off because our entire college was behind a proxy. For LinkedIn, the IP address was of proxy's IP address. So it blocked the proxy IP. And no matter who was trying to access it, it was blocked. And it's very common that organizations like educational institutes and corporate setups, they typically have a proxy which helps you with protecting the client's identity. Second reason is about policies. Like your organizations, your educational organizations would want to act, restrict the access to certain types of websites. For example, Torrent was banned in our college. Right? In that case, because all the requests is going through this single machine, a lot of policies can be applied over here. For example, even in India, certain websites are blocked. For example, TikTok is blocked in India. So the nation's firewall through which or the IP addresses or the sorry, the ISP's firewall through which the requests are going, those rules are configured that any request going to TikTok.com needs to be blocked. Right? That is an example of forward proxy. Right. Now, certain organizations like, for example, my website arpitbahani.me was blocked in Walmart. They had to submit a request that, hey, we want to access this website. The IT admin used to see what this website is. Is this good? Then used to whitelist it. This, this indeed happened with me. Right. Third reason, because everything is going through this common proxy, you can see that you can keep your frequently accessed content on that. I'll give you one other practical example. The, at, my, at my college, the Java docs, I'm talking 2008, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So during these years, what used to happen was we used to code in Java. And the Java docs is what we had to refer to on whatever we, whatever we wanted to do with it. Right? So Java docs were cached on the college proxy so that even if the internet is off, we could still be able to access Java docs and Java docs website used to load very quickly. They used to cache content on the proxy site. So the second type of proxy is called reverse proxy, which abstracts out the complexities of the downstream systems. So here you, so the second type of proxy is called reverse proxy that abstracts out the complexities of the downstream systems. So users will connect to a reverse proxy and it is responsibility of the reverse proxy to route the request to the corresponding node. Now, one very common example of reverse proxy is load balancer. So you connect to the load balancer and load balancer, depending on the load balancing algorithm, it choose to forward the request to one of the servers. So here we abstracted out the complexities of how many servers we have, what all they do and abstracted that logic out in the reverse proxy. 
right so which is where load balancing is one of the most common reasons why we had reverse proxy another one being routing which is like an api gateway where your request can come for one of the services let's say if my request start with slash auth send it to authentication service if it start with slash payments send it to payment service so in reverse proxy you could also configure your routing logic which helps you route the request to the corresponding set of machines Right. Third is caching because everything is going through the reverse proxy. I can cache some of the static responses allowing me to not fire the request to origin server and get the response. So for example, if let's say one of the blog is very popular, I can cache the content of the blog on the load balancer itself. So next time the request for that blog comes in, I can directly respond back to the users without having a need to go to the API server and get the response. It helps me save the bandwidth of my API server and the CPU and the memory of it, right? Routing, uh, load balancing routing, very critical feature. Caching, again, very important. The fourth one is abstraction. So here the best part is that because we are hiding, we are abstracting out the elasticity of the infrastructure that we don't know if there are five servers or 10 servers or 15 servers behind this, for us, reverse proxy becomes a single point of entry. I would always make a call to the load balancer's domain name and in turn it will make call to whichever server it wants to. So it abstracts out that complexities for me, making this infrastructure elastic that I can add 10 more servers or reduce five servers, I don't care because my user remains unaffected for this. So it abstracts out the complexities of the downstream systems while the forward proxy that we discussed, it abstracted out the clients from the downstream systems. Right. So look at the box where we placed it. In the first one, the box is on the clients. We are abstracting out the clients. So for the other side, it's only single entity. While the reverse proxy is complete opposite of that, where we are abstracting out the complexities and the abs abstracting out the complexities of the downstream systems. One very cool example, a very practical example of that is load balances, straightforward. API gateways, which basically routes the request to the corresponding microservice and database proxies. Right. So load balancers, Nginx HA proxy, great tools uh, to explore acting as a load balancer. For API gateway, Kong gateway is a great example. Let's spend some time talking about DB proxies. So proxy SQL is a great, uh, great uh, tool that acts as a DB proxy. Very similar to load balancer, but slightly more advanced. So what proxy SQL or what DB proxy does is it accepts the request like a normal SQL query from the client. It abstracts out the complexities of the database that in behind the scenes, your database can be sharded, partitioned across multiple servers. We don't care. The logic is configured on the DB proxy side, right? The request goes to proxy SQL, proxy SQL forwards the request to the corresponding machine. Again, proxy SQL is a concrete example. Every database has its own sort of database proxy implementation. Right? Now, what is the use of proxy? Uh, what is the use of database proxies? is it can cache responses like a common SQL query can be cached on proxy SQL so that I don't have to like the proxy SQL need not forward the request to the database for subsequent request. Only the first one can go while other can be served from this reduces the load on the database. Second is connection pooling that it accepts a lot of connections from the client, but it can make limited connections with the database leveraging and utilizing the database connections to its best ability. And third, it abstracts out the database topology that we don't know how the data is moved, how or who owns which data and uh, the entire topology, like how many servers are there, that is all abstracted out. If tomorrow we make from three servers to five servers, our user does not need to know, they have a single point of contact to reach out to, to get the queries answered. This is database proxy. They are very, very, very common and very prevalent in system design in most cases, real world systems. So I have been personally using a few out there, but this is something that uh, is very essential. Reverse proxies, they are very prevalent across a lot of systems, be it for APIs or databases. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend you to explore it when you find time. But yeah, that is all what I wanted to cover today. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.